What's up? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, we're going to talk about what does it take to make it as a catcher? All right, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan. I'm a former pro pitcher, so I wasn't a catcher myself, but obviously I threw to a lot of really great catchers and to a lot of really terrible catchers, and I coached a lot of young players in their journey in baseball. So I have a good amount of insight about what it takes to really be a good catcher. So I'm gonna give you some of those tips here today. So number one is high attention to detail. One thing you hear from people in professions where they're always with people, they are always like on quote unquote. That was kind of how my job is when I'm like teaching a clinic or teaching lessons. Being on all the time is really mentally stressful and it's taxing, it takes a lot out of you. As a catcher, you're pretty much on the entire game. You can't take a pitch off because I'm going to throw you 120 fastballs, sliders, curveballs, changeups, whatever, and you've got to be locked in and catch and frame and block all of them, right? So catching number one, you have to have a really high attention to detail. You have to have superb focus, and you have to be one of those people who can be locked in and on even on the hottest days when it's raining, when it's freezing, when the field's in terrible condition. Uh, you have to be locked in on every pitch of every game of your career, and not everyone can do that. So you have to have a really high attention to detail and really superb focus to be a high-level catcher. Number two, you have to have tremendous grit and toughness. And look, number one, you're going to get hit with foul tips. You're going to get a hit with you know the backswing of a bat once in a while on the back of your helmet. It's terrible when that happens, but it, it's going to happen to you. You're going to get hit in the nuts. All these things are going to happen, and those are physically demanding, and you got to be right back in the game. But besides all that, you also have to be so tough as far as running down to first to back up ground balls. You've got to be hustling back to the backstop when one gets past you. You just really can't take plays off. Beyond just being locked in pitch by pitch, even when it's 100 degrees in August and you're catching the third game in three days and you're exhausted, you still have to go full bore all the time. Nothing can get by you. And that just takes a lot. And your body is going to be tired. Your body is going to be beat up from foul balls, from getting crossed up by pitchers, and just from blocking over and over and over. It's a demanding position. And this is one of the reason catchers don't hit as well as other positions because their body is just physically put through the ringer every single day. And it's tougher to be as good and explosive at the plate when they get their chances to hit. So you have to be really tough mentally and physically to be a great catcher. Number three, and this is something that I got on my amateur players on a lot, is you have to really love catching. So I remember one of my seasons, we had two catchers on our most elite 17U team. One of these kids loved catching to death. The other kid, he really loved hitting and playing baseball, but he didn't really love being a catcher. And here was the difference. Catcher A, who really loved it, he would catch bullpens all day long. He would never complain. He would stay late. He would get there early. He would do all that. Because if you don't really love catching, you're not going to love most of your job, which is catching bullpens. Pitchers have a lot of running to do. Hitters have to do tons and tons of ground balls and fly balls. Every part of every position has a tedious part of the job. For catchers, your job is to catch the pitchers. That's literally why you're called a catcher. So you're going to have to catch six bullpens in an afternoon at a, at a typical practice. And your practice is probably not going to be as fun as other players. You get to go do more of like the, you know, fun stuff like running around the field. You're going to be stuck in the bullpen for an hour and a half catching bullpens, the same guys you catch every week. If you don't really love that to death and really take pride in, hey, I'm catching these six bullpens in a row and it's going to make me better. So I'm happy to do it. If you don't have that mindset, it's going to be really hard to be a higher level catcher. And with those two catchers that I had on my elite level team, the one of them, you know, he was he didn't really get a lot better as an actual receiver. He was a good hitter, but he was never going to be an elite catcher because he just didn't love it enough. He didn't want to catch bullpens. He was always trying to pawn them off on somebody else. So you have to really love catching because the number one way to get better as a catcher is to catch more bullpens, catch more pitches. That's how you see more sliders. That's how you learn to, to block more curveballs. That's how you hone your craft. Catching is your position. So if you don't love it, it's going to be a hard road for you. Number four, you have to be smart and you have to be assertive because basically the catcher is like the general of the field. Sure, the shortstop really takes priority of the infield and like helps all there. The pitcher obviously is in control of the, the tempo of the game and a lot of aspects of it in general. Same with the center fielders kind of controls the outfield. 
But the catcher, like they see everything ha- happen in front of them. They're co- constantly calling, you know, cutoff relay throws, all that stuff. They're obviously reading the pitcher, helping him with pitch calling and helping to just control the emotions of the pitcher in general. The catcher's got to do a lot of stuff and they have to have a lot of baseball intelligence, emotional intelligence. They have to be good with working with their players on the field. It can't be all about them because they have to have a lot of cooperation and buy-in from the rest of their team. So catchers have to be really smart people. They have to really be observant and watch the game and have a good baseball IQ, which comes from, you know, it takes it takes time to develop that. And they also, like I said, they have to be assertive. They have to be unafraid to bark out orders, tell guys where they need to be, you know, to, to do what needs to be done. They really are the general of the field and they're a very, very important player. So catchers need to be very intelligent, assertive. They have to have good observation skills and they need to be good with working with other people. And number five, I want to piggyback on this a little more because the catcher pitcher relationship, which I'll talk about in another video. So if you're watching this video for the first time, check out the description link below, because depending on when this was released, that video might already be done. But pitchers obviously are going to work with their catchers as a battery. That's why they call them battery mates, right? So you have to have a lot of emotional intelligence as a catcher to read your pitcher. Is my pitcher frustrated? Is my pitcher furious right now? Does my pitcher pitch best when he's Pretty confident and aggressive and angry, but not too angry. All those are like reading into what the pitcher's doing is really important because if I'm out there and I'm usually a pretty aggressive, like kind of angry pitcher, but right now I'm fuming, you can almost see the the smoke coming out of my ears. That's a good time for a smart catcher to come out there and be like, hey, Dan, I need you to take a breath, calm down a little bit. Let's get this hitter. You got him, but you got to settle in a little bit. Like you're, I can see you're frustrated and you're angry. That kind of stuff is important. Catchers play a good role when they have a good rapport with pitchers, which takes time to develop that trust and that rapport. But when they do have that, they're like the, the lifeline for a lot of, of, of us pitchers out there where they can go out and give us some good advice, calm us down, slow our tempo, give us a little bit of feedback to get back on track. So having that really high level of emotional intelligence is important because they really are like the closest. They're very in touch. They know what's coming in. They see the way the ball is coming into the plate and they can see firsthand the reaction, the emotions, all that of the pitcher. So emotional intelligence is a really important skill to have as a catcher. And lastly, let's talk a little bit about the physical skills. So you can be the nice thing about being a catcher is that you can pretty much be any size. Obviously, they're getting bigger and taller in the major leagues. They're less of like the fat kid in the major leagues now. They're more of like the taller, pretty athletic guy. It's definitely a changing body type, but you can really be any size. You just need to have the technical skills. And the nice thing is is that the technical skills of being a catcher aren't super complex. Like throwing a baseball is a pretty complex motion. Swinging a bat at a high level, having a great swing is not easy to achieve, but, you know, catching the ball properly, you know, uh, receiving and framing, those are not easy to do, but they're not really complex skills and blocking is not really a complex skill. It's not to say they're easy because they're not, but those are all skills that you can definitely learn and hone through tons and tons of good quality practice. So you need to be physically pretty well built. And so you have to be an animal in the weight room and you need to buy into all the strength training and sports performance training. But catchers really just need to be, they need to be built pretty durable, able to take the abuse. Their knees need to be able to take the abuse and they need to be strong enough to have the stamina and the endurance. And again, that comes from the weight room and their training and practice. Um, But also just physically, you need to have good reflexes. You need to have quick feet. And those are sort of things that you need to train and have some, some good explosiveness and power because it is not easy to block an 82 mile per hour slider in the dirt and to know when you need to do that. The, The reflexes and the reaction time that catchers have is incredible. I don't know how they can determine, okay, I'm going to have to get down and block this ball or I can catch this ball. They have to make that decision in like two tenths of a second, probably on a 90 mile per hour pitch. So catchers need to have reflexes, reaction time, quick feet to make those, those throws to second base, first base, third base. They need to have a lot of that and they need to be physically durable. But the nice thing is that a lot of these skills are, are easy to develop with quality practice over a long period of time. They're not easy skills, but compared to some of the ones that are a little more intangible sometimes, like throwing a ball of 95 miles per hour, you can't just teach anyone to do that. Uh, or having like Mike Trout swing, you could hit in the cage all day your whole life and you might never have a swing that nice. Uh, but catching skills, they're there for the taking if you want to put in the quality practice and, and get out, get after it. So hopefully today's video was helpful. Obviously, what it takes to be a catcher is a lot of discipline, focus, hard work and practice and grittiness. Those are really important skills. But any catcher that has those and really wants to be great and really loves their job and is willing to put in the work, catch a ton of bullpens, work really hard, 
everyone's looking for good catchers. So if that's you, congrats. If that's not you yet, then work, you know, take this video with a grain of salt and start working on your game. See what you can control and get better at and move forward. All right. So if you enjoyed this video today, leave a comment below. What other kind of catching related videos do you want to see? Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you here in the next one.